we're here for a one night stay at Jonathan Dickinson State Park in Hobe Sound, Florida. And we thought since this is our third time here, we'll do a five things review. I'm Rachel and I'm Joe and we're two, two crazy, crazy campers. campers after losing a combined weight of more than 200 pounds we realized we had so much more energy for activities come along with us as we explore the great outdoors and join us on a brand new adventure so we are here at one of our favorite state parks here in Florida this is Jonathan Dickinson State Park but it's not one of our favorites because it's got lush foliage and like things hanging over you and like wonderful rivers that you can go swimming in in the middle of January. It's close. It's close. It's very close. It's about an hour and 15 minutes away from our house located in Hobe Sound, Florida right off of the intercoastal waterway and the oceans very close as well and it's just a nice place for us to get away real quickly for the night yeah i mean we're here right now for just an overnight stay and sometimes you just need that yeah so here's the thing we're going to do our five things review of this campground this is actually the third time that we've stayed here at Jonathan Dickinson State Park, uh, but it is the first time that we have stayed in Eleanor, our 2019 Grand Design Imagine yes. 2600 RB. We have been in our pop-up camper here. Yeah, so let's get into our five things. So if you're new to like our channel, we review all campgrounds based on five things. We're gonna talk about hospitality, amenities, the campsites themselves, stuff to do, and finally, would we recommend it? So let's talk about number one, hospitality. Now hospitality kind of encompasses a lot of different things. Number one, how friendly are the fellow campers here? Like, you know, are they really friendly? Are they keep to themselves? Are there a lot of kids? That kind of stuff. Uh, but more so, we're focusing on the people who work here, the rangers, the people at the front guard gate, as well as the campground host. And I have to say, we have mixed feelings on this one. Yeah, depending on when we've come and the time of year and who's working at the guard gate, I mean, that, that does a lot. I mean, for instance, when we came in yesterday, they let us in early. Yep. Um, but in the past, they've been like, it's 2.55, you can't check in until three o'clock, so like go park someplace because you are absolutely not giving in. And it's the same thing with like giving us information. Sometimes you get pamphlets and maps and there's lots to do here as we'll talk about later. But like yesterday, no map, no, no nothing. Here's where, you know, you're gonna be parking. It was just like, here's your tag and good luck finding it. Yeah, as a matter of fact, this is our third trip here and like I said, the first two times we were here in the pop-up camper, I don't remember them giving us maps, but we were here in the height of the pandemic. It was like August and there were several things closed. Like for example, the watering hole. Well, a lot of that stuff is reopened. And when we came in, she did say to us like, have you been here before? We said yes. And they're like, okay, here's your pass, go on in. But made no mention of if there's anything closed, if there's anything new, like we found out there's now horseback riding, which they didn't have before. Yeah. So those kind of like, you know, little details would have been nice if they could have at least given us a pamphlet or something on the way in. Yeah. So let's talk about number two, amenities. And the amenities here on the campground is, is amazing. Yeah. So first of all, let's talk about what amenities encompasses is what type of sites there are, how is the cell phone service, uh, bathrooms, and yeah, like Rachel said, they're amazing. Let's start off with the bathrooms. Brand new, I mean, and super clean. The campground hosts are doing a great job, like, you know, cleaning the sites, but also the bathrooms are spotless. And there's a lot of them. Yes. So we are over here in Pine Grove, which there are two separate campground areas, which we'll talk about in a minute, but each one of them, has two camp uh, two bathrooms but then this one here be on this side there's actually two separate loops for pine grove and each loop has two bathrooms in addition to that there are bathrooms up by the pavilions there's bathrooms down by the watering hole and the canoe rentals there's bathrooms on the bike trails and also the bathrooms in the campgrounds all have laundry services. Yeah, it's like they knew I was coming. Yeah, it's been really nice that when we go to the state parks, almost every one of them have had laundry services. So what that means is we bring some quarters, make sure you bring the quarters, 
and we're able to wash all of our clothes on the second to last day or on the last day and then we go home we don't have any laundry to wash it's very nice especially for a weekend warrior i don't want to spend like the rest of my week having to do laundry and the nice thing is is you don't have to go home and beat up your wash machine with your comforters and your sheets and stuff you can beat up their wash machines with them <laughs> now another thing that amenities addresses is cell phone service and it's really good here it really is we have all three companies for the major companies anyway of t-mobile uh, at&t and verizon for internet service so that depending on where we go we can make sure we have internet for our youtube channels and all three of them have full bars no problems downloading i was able to upload a um, six gigabyte video last night it took like 10 minutes which is phenomenal over cell phone service it so really is. no problems at all no matter what your carrier is you're going to be able to stay communicated and get online as well yeah i mean this time we came with my mom and she's out kayaking on the the river and she's texting me back and forth letting me know like where she's at and that she's having a really great time so number three the campsites themselves and this part's a little bit long because we're going to show you all of of the different campsites so you can pick where you want to go uh, but I want to address a couple things because there are two separate campgrounds here at Jonathan Dickinson State Park and it's a very different experience very different experience so the section that we're staying at right now is called the Pine Grove section and you can see kind of looking around it's like a beach it's not very woody now if you're used to staying in like your traditional RV parks like thousand trails kind of things this is gonna be a luxury because yeah. there's a lot of room between you and your neighbors if you're more used to going camping in the woods, you're very out in the open. And we're here in February, the current temperature is about 80 degrees, and I'm roasting. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty toasty, but I'm willing to trade off the heat. I can go in and get some air conditioner or go on a bike ride and get this ocean breeze because you do have a really lovely ocean breeze. And I like the fact that I'm not trekking in all of the dirt and stuff that's over at the, you know, the river campground. Yeah. So to finish up this section before we even talk about the dirt and stuff over there. So this section is much closer to the beach. Therefore, it is much windier and there is no real barrier other than these few sea grapes that you see to stop you. So we came here once in our pop-up camper and... I mean, it was rocking, right? Yeah. We were blowing back and forth, having to take down tarps and tie the thing because we were afraid we were gonna blow away. And even here where it's not a storm coming in, there's definitely a breeze. We weren't able to extend our awning. But the good thing about this side is it's a little bit newer mm -hmm. and all of the sites are very level and they have gravel and some of them even have pavement. And full hookup. Yes. So now the other side, is the river campground now what that one has that this one doesn't have is a little bit more foliage but that also has dirt lots instead of gravel lots it does not have sewer but it is closer to the water and it is much further away from the ocean so it's not as breezy because there's lots of pine trees that separate that campground from this campground. Yeah, so here you have a beach experience and there you have like a lake experience. So it's very, very different. Yeah, now also on the other side during the summer, during our rainy season, it can flood a little bit. At least where the water is, it does come up very high. We were here in the middle of the rainy season and stayed over there. We didn't have any problems with like water in our campsite or anything. And we had a lot of rain. But what we did experience was because there's more foliage and more overhang, you don't dry out as quickly going on that side. No, and it can be a little bit more buggy. Yeah, so let's go ahead and play right now a review of all of the campsites and then we'll come back and show you a little bit more. Forget your foregone conclusions Settle in, settle now
And you think you're strong But boy, you're wrong Never gonna run you down
take a step towards you a lump in my throat It's been some time since we first met And I remember him well You wore the red coat I just hoped that you wouldn't forget And I As you can see, there is a huge difference between the two different campgrounds and you really have to think about what you're trying to do when you're here. To me, I feel like the river campground feels like a family reunion. I was going to say that there is a lot more families over there. There's more tenters over there. There's more children over there. This side is much quieter, a lot more full timers, uh, you know, people who are retired. You see a lot more fifth wheels. This side really accommodates the larger rigs more than the other side. Like we can get in the other side, but a lot of these larger fifth wheels and stuff are not going to get on the other side side but the other side if you stay on the outer loop especially like around that 100 number 
uh, you're really going to get that experience where you're feeling closed. You don't see your neighbors. If you stay in the inner part, you see everybody. But when you get into that outer part, you have a lot of privacy. Plus, you're very close to where you would launch your kayak or, fishing. or rent a kayak or boat or go on one of the sightseeing cruises. You're, you're way closer to that. I mean, it takes about 10 minutes for us to yeah. drive from this campground to let my mom get in her kayak down by the river. And also, if you have maybe extended family Family who would be visiting and staying in a cabin all the cabins are down there yeah and, and this is a very very large state park it, it's kind of deceiving but when you first come in like the pine grove campgrounds are right up here in the front which that's another negative on the pine grove is you have a lot more road noise because you are right off of a1a so it's a little bit noisier here than in the back. But again, there's trade-offs. You know, every time you gain something, you're gonna have to lose something and that is something you're getting. But yeah, it's about eight miles through the road to get to the other side. So you're gonna be over there and be like, hey, I need to run to Publix. And even though Publix is only a mile out the entrance of you this ain't state running park, there. it is about a 14 mile drive wrapping around everything. Yeah. So, but I think they're both great. Now, I would say with either one, if you're going to come here, make sure you go through our site-by-site -site tour again because the campsites are so different. I mean, it depends on what you're looking for. We like privacy. I want to be surrounded by stuff so that I'm not looking at my neighbors and they're not looking at us. And like, if I happen to forget to put down like my shade, nobody gets a glimpse of me because nobody wants a glimpse of me Aww. getting dressed. Uh, but it's it's just very different so you have to really kind of look at them i would say if you go over to the river campground again stay in that outer loop if you want some privacy if you want a protection from the wind and that kind of stuff if you want to be more like close to the bathroom like maybe you're in a pop-up camper stay in the middle yeah okay especially on this side because they butt right up and they have private walkways right to the restrooms number four i'm gonna let you handle this one stuff to do. This is such a fantastic place for any age child. Like this is the place to bring your kids to mm -hmm. because number one, you're very close to the beach. Yep. If they want to go to the beach, let's go. You're very close to the observatory tower. If mm -hmm. you enjoy beautiful, breathtaking views with a little bit of exercise, that's a great thing. They have bike trails that are incredible. I mean, bring your helmet because not only do you have flat surfaces if you just want to enjoy a leisurely bike tour, but if you want a BMX here, like this is the place yeah, for that. Yeah, they have main trails that kind of that are paved that go through where you can do nature walks and nature hikes and nature bike rides. You can just take them down the streets like we like to. And then they have a whole section where you can really get into dirt paths and, and mountain biking and do jumps and things like that. In addition to all of that, you can launch your boat or your kayak here. They have a boat ramp. They have a place where you can rent kayaks. They have a place where you can rent boats. Yeah, motorboats. They have boat tours. There are pavilions so that you can have parties. You can get food here. You have a whole like little diner section. There are playgrounds in all of the campsites. I mean, just a nature walks, nature Horseback hikes. Horseback riding. So many things to do. I really think that this state park has more to do for the family than any other state park that we have been at. Just a wide variety of things. So you're definitely going to enjoy yourself here. Well, and then at night when you're ready to wind down, you want to watch a movie or you're going to go ahead and let the kids have their electronic devices, they'll actually be able to use them because the cell service is great and you're in great proximity to shops and such. So if you need something, you're not so remote that you can't run to the grocery store. Yeah. So finally, number five, would we recommend it? And for me, I'm going to say it depends on what your definition of camping is. Okay. So I grew up in New York. I grew up on Long Island, but then Every weekend we went upstate into the Catskill Mountains. So for me, camping is being in the woods. You're not gonna get that here. This is more of like out on the beach. Now, if you're an RVer that is used to staying in tight RV parks where you can't extend your awning because you're gonna be on a neighbor, uh, you're gonna love this place. Well, I'm gonna have to say, pack your bags. Like there is no doubt for me, this is the place to be because it has a little bit of everything. That's the, true. The only downside would be people are going to be able to reach you. If you want that camping experience where it's almost like a cruise and nobody can get their call through to you because you want to be like off the grid, 
this isn't the place because cell service, internet, everything is lovely here. I gotta think, I wanna add something to number five that we can start doing from this video forward. You're gonna give me a positive and a negative okay. on this state park slash campground. So give me your positive. My positive would be this Pine Trails side. I'm somebody, especially as a weekend warrior, I don't wanna have to deep clean my trailer every single time. We just go for a night or two. And the fact that we have this side, I can enjoy all of the river activities and horseback riding, but it's such nice rock sites that keeps my rig clean. Okay, for me, the positive for us anyway, it may not apply to you, and that is how close it is to our house. So the only reason we're even here this weekend is because we had plans to go further up into the Yeehaw Junction area, and they fell through, and we're like, what are we going to do? And I was able to get a site here, and I'm like, oh great, it's within an hour. We did a one night, and we don't normally do one night camping traps. And I kind of love the fact that maybe the best campsite for you is the one closest to you because you'll actually go there. Okay, so what's your negative? Things are far apart here. So you wanna go horseback riding and you're staying in the Pine Trails area, like you better put your walking shoes on or take a ride in your car because they're not in close proximity. And it's the same thing. If you're staying at the river campground and you wanna go up to the observatory, it's gonna be a hefty bike ride. I mean, that's what it's all about. Getting out and moving is a great thing, but be prepared for it. Yeah, even if you have a toy hauler bringing a golf cart, your golf cart is not going to get you from Pine, from Pine Grove to the back where the horseback no. riding is. It's that long of a ride. Okay, so for me, my negative is going to be how out in the open you are. And really, that's going to apply to both campgrounds. Yeah. Um, so there's four or five sites over on the riverside uh, where you have a lot of foliage kind of over the top of you. But for the most part, they're like this. Not so bad in February, but come the summer when it's 95 degrees Full outside. Full exposure. And I can remember setting up our pop-up camper and having changed my clothes three times yes. from the time we set up to the time I went to bed because I would just be sopping sweat because you are way out in full exposure so make sure you've got a good hat some long sleeve shirts and stuff and just make sure you're protecting yourself from the sun well that is going to be our review of jonathan dickinson state park now let us know down in the comment section if you've ever been here also let us know any other state parks that are here in florida that you really enjoy now please do us a favor hit that like button down below it really helps us build the channel and don't forget to hit the little bell button and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it until next time happy, happy camping, camping.